How does an electron within an atom make the transition from a small radius to a large radius, or from a large radius to a small radius? The dynamics of electron movement is more or less the same for different atoms, but the Bohr atom, simply one proton and one electron, provides a simple understanding of electron behavior and movement within an atom. Our atom has a series of rings called shells, which house electrons and have a certain amount of energy associated with them. Electrons can't just be anywhere within the atom, only at and never between shells. Here's another way of looking at this where n represents the energy shell and our electron can potentially occupy any one of these shells. And our electron will take on however much energy is associated with that shell. So if the electron occupies the second shell, for instance, it will have exactly the amount of energy associated with that n equals 2 shell. So it's crucial to recognize that energy increases as n increases, i.e. as our electron gets further and further away from the nucleus. This electron over here in the fourth shell has more energy than the one in the n equals 2 state. Thus, how would the n equals 2 electron jump to the n equals 4 state? Would we need to add energy or would we need to subtract energy? Well, we would need to add energy to the electron, right? So we can graduate it from a lower energy to a higher energy shell. We describe energy as a state function, meaning that we calculate the change in energy as the difference between final energy minus initial energy. What can we say about the change in energy if the final energy is greater than the initial energy? Will it be positive, negative, or zero? Well, it's gonna be positive. In other words, greater than zero, because in order to go from, for example, one joule to 10 joules, that's a positive change of nine joules of energy. And that's exactly what happens to our electron when it jumps from the n equals two to the n equals four state. It's going from a low energy to a high energy, so we must add energy. Thus, the terms add energy and positive change in energy are synonymous. Conversely, if the electron started at the higher energy n equals 4 shell and then went to a lower energy n equals 2 shell, the electron lost energy, so our change in energy is negative. As I demonstrated earlier, n and the energy of n are directly proportional, meaning that they both increase together and they both decrease together. So because of this relationship, we can specify our change in energy equation to explicitly acknowledge the energy shells that we jump in between, where if n increases, energy increases, and if n decreases, energy also decreases. And don't forget, this is in reference to the electron which occupies these different shells. So if our electron goes from a low n to a high n, it's gonna gain energy. And if our electron goes from a high n to a low n, it's gonna lose energy. But where exactly did that energy come from? The law of conservation says that energy is not created nor destroyed. So how did this electron gain energy to get to the higher energy n equals 4 shell? Likewise, how does the opposite happen where it goes from a high energy state to a low energy state? Well, the short answer is photons. Particles of light are absorbed and emitted by electrons, allowing these electrons to bounce between discrete energy levels. Here, we have absorption of the photon by the electron, so it graduates to a higher energy shell. So now the electron has more energy, and this is emission, where the electron releases energy in the form of a photon. Altogether, electrons tend to be stricken by light energy, which they absorb to graduate to a higher energy state, and then they go back down because they're unstable to a more stable, lower energy state, and they give off that very same photon. Likewise, the law of conservation of energy tells us that the energy of the photon must equal the amount of energy gained or lost by the electron. This means that if an electron gains nine joules of energy, those nine joules come from a nine joule photon. In contrast, if an electron loses nine joules of energy, that loss was in the form of a nine joule photon. Here are the values per both scenarios I just mentioned. By nature, photon energy is always positive. And if electron energy change is negative, it is equal and opposite to the energy of the photon. That's why there's this absolute value sign right here. Therefore, this down here is the actual equation. The energy gained or lost by the electron when it jumps between shells is equal to the energy of the photon responsible for causing that jump up or down, and we use absolute value to ensure that we have positive values on either side. No doubt this video was confusing, so check out this five question quiz video to help you assess your knowledge and clarify any confusion you might have.